Hello there and welcome back to another video. It is Monday in this brand new week. We are now in June as well and obviously it being the 1st of June, it is the anniversary of the time where Liverpool won it six times. We won it six times and uh, it was just fantastic. It's great to go back and remember what happened last year, the celebrations and everything that happened after it, but also the match. The match itself is not reflected well upon by rival fans and for some Liverpool fans as well it's not reflected on very very well purely because yes we got the early penalty Salah slots it away well, he slots it away he blasts it into the back of the net to make it 1-0 within about a minute obviously for the rest of the game it was man of the match performance by Alison Becker um, and also some of the defence as well. But Tottenham had us under the cosh for most of that game. And then come with the man, come with the hour, 87th minute or around that sort of time. Divock Origi from the ball bouncing about in the air. I think Matip heads it back down. And then Divock Origi absolutely power drives it across the floor into the far post off his weak foot to make it 2-0. And that wrapped it up for Liverpool last year. And we can reflect on that. I want to watch the match again tonight. Um... And I remember how many chances that Tottenham had in that game. And they, they they had their star players in that game as well. They made a bit of a criminal mistake in not starting Lucas, who actually dragged them over the line against Ajax, scoring a hat-trick to really... You know, that was two semi-finals, Liverpool versus Barcelona, where we absolutely pulled off an absolute miracle. And then Tottenham went and right down to the very, very, almost the very last kick of the game, if not the last kick of the game, they brought themselves to life and brought themselves into the final, and they he just didn't start Lucas, and I felt that that was a mistake as well, but Tottenham had enough chances in that game, we ended up running out winners in that game, and without stress, I'm going to go and watch that game tonight as well. So hey, it's something to celebrate, it's something to look back on with great positivity, but also... It gives us something to move forward with as well in terms of the Premier League. Now, over the weekend, or even maybe Friday, Saturday, or something like that anyway, the Premier League did their latest tests of coronavirus or COVID-19 tests as well. And it was the most positive result of all. The fact that it came back that there were absolutely zero positive tests for the Premier League, which is magnificent news. It really is. It's a positive step forward for the coronavirus in terms of it not affecting the Premier League players, the club members, the coaching staff, everything like that, that it looks like, I think it was something over a thousand club members of each team or something like that, Around those were the numbers, massive numbers, and the fact that it was zero, no one came back with a positive test, is huge for the Premier League to come back, it really is, For if those numbers kept going up and up or something like that, then people would really start to question the protocols and everything that was put in place for these tests but it's a big big step forward in the Premier League coming back and it looks now more than ever 16 days away from the 17th of June where you're going to see Man City versus Arsenal and you're going to see Aston Villa versus Sheffield United it looks much more like it's going to be coming back and it's just vital that these tests and everything keep going They're the same way that they've been going since they started making sure that everything is nice and good and well and as least negative uh, positive tests as possible that is what we want that is what we're looking for and that is what we've got so far so fingers crossed it's still again as some people say we're not out of the woods whatsoever yet there's still a lot that can happen between these 16 days you know for that game those games happen on the wednesday night wednesday the 17th there's still a lot that can happen but fingers crossed it can all go ahead nice and safely as well so that is some good news as well to look forward to and hopefully it can keep getting better now the other piece of news as well it's it's sort of like recycled news and i don't know if it's coming from anywhere like whether it's coming from anywhere with substance if you know what i mean felipe felipe coutinho's agent is apparently in talks with the likes of arsenal possibly even a man united possibly even a chelsea as well about a return to the Premier League from Barcelona on loan. Now, on loan, it I don't know. It looks like, and I'm going to try and stay as neutral as possible in this because I still believe that Coutinho made a mistake in the way that he left Liverpool and the fact that he wanted to leave Liverpool anyway. Jurgen Klopp's words that he'd said about Felipe Coutinho before he left still ring true. If he stays at Liverpool, he could cement himself as a club legend 
But if he goes to another club, a big club in Europe, wherever it may be, he would just become another player. Now, he's played at Barcelona, hasn't really made an impact. Yes, he will have, he's got trophies under his name. That's fine. That's fantastic. That's great for him. He's gone to, to Bayern Munich, hasn't really hit the ground running, doesn't really get a look in. I don't know if he's injured right now or anything like that, but Bayern Munich look far and away a great team at the moment. They really do. They look like an absolute juggernaut and they don't look like they need a Felipe Coutinho. And I don't think that they're going to be looking to make that transfer permanent from Barcelona. So Barcelona are looking at it thinking, well, how are we going to sell him? Or can we sell him? Or do we loan him out somewhere? Now, him wanting to maybe get a return to the Premier League, but not with Liverpool, because, again, I still feel, without going too far into it, and without it sounding like I'm hounding or digging on Coutinho... I don't think Coutinho could come back to Liverpool even if he wanted to because I think the system that we use to play football has just moved on quite a lot from when Coutinho was with us and I don't think that there's a place for him to fit in in that system anymore. That's my opinion. Let me know what you think because everyone's got their opinions and everyone is entitled to their opinions. That is absolutely, totally fine as well but that's my opinion. Now, if you look at it, Arsenal, Manchester United, Chelsea. Man United, in my opinion, don't need him because they've got a midfielder in a Bruno Fernandes that is probably, if they didn't have him, yes, they might look at Coutinho. They might go ahead and look at him and see if they could bring him in and to do a similar sort of job. But Bruno Fernandes is doing a fantastic job for Manchester United. I can't take that away from them. And they've got the likes of a Paul Pogba to come back in as well. And then they've got a lot of other midfielders, a McTominay, um, Fred, They've got loads of different options as well. They've got loads of wing options as well. So you wouldn't even be able to think, well, they could play him in off the left, where that's where you get the best out of a Marcus Rashford or even a Martial can play there. There's, they'll have so many different players that can play in these positions. I don't think that that would benefit their style of play. And I don't think that they're going to get what they would want out of Coutinho in the wide areas anyway. Then you look at a Chelsea. Well, Chelsea, they've got a fairly stacked midfield. Even just naming the likes of uh, N'Golo Kante, um, Kovacic. Then you've got the young lads like, uh, well, you've got like Ross Barkley even. Hasn't set the world on fire or anything like that. But again, he's done okay. He's an option in there as well. I'm definitely forgetting someone. Um, I can't, Mason Mount, that's another one as well. He's come through this year. He's done very well for Chelsea. And then you go look at the wide areas as well. Well, they've still got William at the moment. They've still got Pulisic. Even though he's had injury issues, he can still play up there as well. There's definitely going to be some players that I'm also forgetting in those areas. But I don't think that they would be. that's not their priority area. Hudson Odoi is another player as well that will be looking to come back and do well. He's had his injury issues with Chelsea, but he's a young lad. Frank Lampard will be wanting him to come in as well. Um, so I don't think that's somewhere that Chelsea will be looking to either. Then you've got to look at, okay, Arsenal. Now, what could they, they they could use a Coutinho in the middle. Yes, they've got a Danny Ceballos on loan already, but hasn't really done much. I think his first game he played for Arsenal was against Burnley, did okay. His second game he played, he played against Liverpool at Anfield, I think it was, um, didn't do great. You know, but Liverpool are a difficult team for anyone to come up against. They really, really are, especially when we are on form. We are a difficult team for anybody. And then hasn't really done much since. Had a couple of injuries here and there as well. Their midfield looks like it is well overdue for a bit of a refresh. It really is. A little bit more of an injection of, you know, not just pace, but good agility in the midfield, good passing vision. And while they've got someone who's got good passing ability in like an Ozil, but doesn't necessarily have the work rate that the Premier League demands these days, Coutinho could fit in at Arsenal. He really could. He could fit in, in the midfield. Putting him on the left-hand side could also work because left-hand side at Arsenal isn't something that they've necessarily got nailed down. Now, they've been using Aubameyang, which is just crazy that they've been using Aubameyang out on the left-hand side. But obviously, he's got ridiculous pace, but he is a brilliant forward man, brilliant striker, brilliant at being on the end of the ball that puts it in the back of the net. That is what he's been known for throughout his whole career. Then on the left-hand side, you'd also have Bukayo Saka as well, who's really come through lately, um, or when the season was in its uh, just before the break and everything like that. He was coming through on the left-hand side and doing very, very well. 
But Coutinho could also be a little bit of like a senior figurehead, as like you could bring him in off the left hand side. He, you know, you know what he's gonna do. He does have a strong left foot as well, but you know he's going to want to cut inside. He's got the ability to curl a ball in from distance as well. But I personally feel as Coutinho's career starts to, you know, he should be nearing getting into his prime. And I feel his attributes as a footballer should be looking around more of a creative attacking midfielder, not necessarily coming in from the left. He's got far too much good vision and ability for passing and finding a pass, finding a killer pass through a midfield, which is what he used to do for us. Never forget some of the balls he used to play through for Daniel Sturridge could cut a team in half and it would just lay it right on a plate for a Sturridge or a Suarez at the time as well. He really is a very, very good passer of the ball and he would most likely be the best fit for Arsenal in terms of what they want to do. And then you think of if you put him in a central midfield or a central attacking midfield position at Arsenal, what has he then got in front of him? You've got a Pepe out on the right-hand side, or Bamiyang or Lacazette up front. You'd have maybe Saka or someone like that on the left-hand side, or whoever else they might play there. If they want to go with Aubameyang on the left-hand side, he could then cut in Coutinho through the middle. It would work for him. And it might sound like I'm trying to sell Coutinho to Arsenal. All I'm trying to do is be a little bit unbiased and just say he could do, if he was coming back to the Premier League, and Chelsea, United and Arsenal are the three teams that would be in for him. The best team for him to go to would be Arsenal because they would actually need him more. He would get game time. That's the thing. If he goes to Man United, most likely going to be a bench player and they won't find a place for him. I don't know whether United's style of play would fit Coutinho either. And then you go look at Chelsea. I don't think what Frank Lampard's wanting to do would be benefited by the inclusion of a Coutinho you can even look at other teams. Tottenham could possibly use someone like that as well. But they re they've got other issues that they need to sort out. And I don't think Coutinho going to a Mourinho-led team would benefit Coutinho. So there's a lot of different options out there for him. If he came back to the Premier League, and obviously Liverpool is not an option for him, where do you think Coutinho would fit in best? My opinion would be Arsenal because they would need him more. And I think he could actually give them more than he could give the other two teams that are apparently in for him anyway. But hey... Let me know what you think in the comments below. Anyway, I'm going to get out of here for now because I've got to go and do a couple of deliveries. Anyway, thank you ever so much for watching this video. If you have enjoyed it, please do like it and subscribe if you're new around here. Please get your comments in the comments box below. Let's start a discussion and we can reflect on it. But for now, thank you so much and I'll catch you later.